Hey everyone, welcome to Awareness with Ashley. My name is Ashley Stewart. I share a first-hand experience of what it's like living with idiopathic intracranial hypertension. You will hear me call this IIH and migraines. I use my own experience to share what living with IIH and migraines is really like. All right, hello everyone and welcome to this week's podcast slash video episode. So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing a question that I got in a message this last week. It's a topic that I honestly believe is not really something that can be answered very easily. The reason why I want to talk about this is because I've struggled with will this get any better in my own journey and on my own journey, I guess I should say. And it's something that I think it's something that we all experience. And this is more so for awareness about people who are in our lives that we really do feel this way at times. I haven't made notes for this because I want this to come from the heart. But while I was talking with this person, I could sense that it was a very difficult situation. And... I don't like to get into any more details than that. Messages are meant to be almost like private conversations in my opinion. Like it, it is something that it should only be released if that person wants it to be released. So I would respect that. However, my big disclaimer with this particular episode is to please seek medical advice if you feel like that you're in a situation where your mental health is struggling to a really certain degree and it's unfortunate but I must also say that no matter where you live these days although mental health is something that seems to be a little bit more accepted by society actually accessing resources to help you with this it's not easy. Getting into the right medical professionals is also not easy. The mental health aspect of chronic illness is something that should be given a lot more attention. We're easily given all the pills in the world, it seems like, but when it comes to addressing the mental part, mental and emotional part of living with chronic illness and chronic pain, it is not addressed at all, actually, in my opinion. Unless you figure out your own way of managing it, it seems like there's really honestly no help. And I would say this is another way that the meditation and mindfulness and awakening stuff has been really, really critical. However, the one thing I must say is that if you're dealing with stuff like that, it can actually be a negative thing to get really deep into your inner thoughts and awareness and all of that. I'm going to be getting into some deep stuff here. I'm going to be getting into some pretty personal stuff here. So I don't want this to be triggering in any sense of the word. And I, as much as I hate the word trigger some days, it is honestly sometimes the best way to describe what is happening. The First thing I want to say is that I had this thought so much about will my life ever truly be better again? Will it ever be to the point where it is again? Now looking back, I can say, yeah, it's gotten to be about 80-85% of what I had before. The reason why I put that caveat in is 80-85% is just to say like it's not 100%. It's not where it was before I got sick by any stretch of the imagination. It's somewhere now where I'm actually comfortable. It's somewhere now that I feel like I can live the life I want to live. And there are still some hurdles and still some difficulties with the whole thing, of course. But it's not an issue to the point where it's completely interfering with my life. There are days, there are bad days, like everything in life, you have bad days. But it's not to the point where I'm stuck on the couch, unable to move, or stuck in bed and unable to get out of bed. It's not where I'm in 100% constant chronic pain. There's almost always sometimes a little bit of pain or some symptoms such as dizziness that... I kind of have adapted to over time, but it's not to the point where I honestly can't function. It depends, I guess, on how low you start 
maybe as to what your definition of success is maybe like if you're in a certain spot now that you feel isn't good enough you kind of do have to look back and go but was I worse than this and can it get any better I guess is the situation right now I literally do not think it can get much better than what it is it could definitely get worse again but I don't think it's ever gonna get any better than what it is now because I have quite a few pain-free days and even quite a few I would say almost symptom-free days. It depends on what's going on with the weather and it depends on how my stress is which another reason I do the meditation is to with the stress and anxiety it, it's the reason why I started but it's not the reason why I continue. Maybe keeping those in check might be a reason why I continue but it's not a main reason why I continue. I'm more interested now in the spiritual aspect of this journey. This question of will I ever get better comes out of, I believe, a place of desperation, of longing for what you had before, and I think is a complete and totally natural thing. But as someone who's kind of gotten on the other side, for me to answer this is honestly probably not a fair question for me to answer because as I was saying when I was kind of communicating with this one person, I said, I honestly believe that it does eventually get better, whether it's from adaptation to your new reality. And sometimes I think it gets better because it honestly does just get better, like you achieve remission or you find a medication that helps. Unfortunately, those two things are not guaranteed with either situation of IIH or migraines. You honestly may not find a medication that helps in terms of migraines like I am very lucky to have found a medication that works as well as it does because even on the Amovig it's not guaranteed there are some people who just don't respond to it for whatever reason and then as far as the IIH being in remission I believe is partly on myself with the weight loss but partly I think I'm just lucky in the fact that I was one of the people who IIH is or could have been there because of me being overweight. I do think there's other things involved that maybe the weight loss has helped with, you know, there is some studies with weight loss and hormones and there's a lot of things that weight loss helps that it may not be directly related to IIH that we know of, but, you know, if it helps, it helps. And I think that's one of the reasons why I am so particular about making sure my weight stays down is because I am, I have to admit, a big fear of mine is gaining weight again and having the IIH come back. That would probably be the worst situation that could happen. Now, I mean, I deal with it if it happened, but my goal is to just not have to go through that again because I'm risking my vision, I'm risking getting sick, I'm risking permanent well, not only my actual vision, but the permanent vision loss as well. So I am really, really particular. And some days it's hard because you can't just indulge in everything that you want to. But anyways, the weight loss issue, I'm not going to get too much into depth. But I am very, very lucky because I have not only found a medication that works, but like I said, I've achieved remission with the IIH. If you're still dealing with the IIH, will it ever get better? I can't answer that question because what my situation is, is different from what your situation might be. And I think that's the biggest thing that I need to stress right now is that if you look at me about where I'm on my journey, I'm at a different place than many people are. And one of the best comments I can get is, you give me so much hope. And that's exactly what I want to be achieving at this point. Please don't take anything I say as, you know, medical advice. I have that right in my videos. This is my own personal journey with this. And the results are going to vary because we are so individual. The reason why we might be in the situation is obviously going to be different if someone is of normal weight and has IIH. I can't explain it. I don't know what's going on and I don't really think medicine really knows what's going on in that case. People who have shunts or stents or all of that are going to be also in a completely different situation because they've got medical devices now in them that, 
you know, can malfunction and it's just a completely different situation. I'd love to be able to answer some of those questions for you guys, but the reality is, is I just can't. It's just not possible. Would I go back and tell myself this is going to get better? Like you need to try and strive and all of that? Yeah, of course. I mean, I would, if it's great motivation, personal motivation, but can I say to someone who's in a completely different situation that it is guaranteed to get better? No, and it's not fair to. I want people to have hope, but I don't want you to have false hope. When you're asking that question of will this ever get better, it's often coming from, and I know this because I've been there, it's coming from a place of desperation of kind of grieving the life that you had before. It's coming from a place of really, really deep and utter darkness and I don't really know how to explain this to people who haven't been through the grief that comes with chronic illness, but it is a type of grief. And having a chronic illness is it, it you go through a grieving process. I don't know how else to word it. Now, I do want to say, I do think going through this darkness is what opened me up to trying meditation to begin with. So it could have been with me a door that led to amazing things and amazing opportunities. The reason why I talk about the meditation is not because it's only a tool with managing stress, anxiety, and all of that, which is important when managing life with migraines. And I think it's important in managing weight loss as well. I don't think people realize that the darkest of days can open up your greatest opportunities. And I don't think that, you know, if things are all sunshine and rainbows all the time, you're not open to some things like you maybe would be if you're struggling. Sometimes I think people say that just to, you know, make someone else feel better or maybe make themselves feel better about the situation. But I truly do honestly believe that if I hadn't been through a point of suffering that I probably wouldn't be in this situation right now because I have a very, very high skeptic alarm bell in my head because of how I was when I was younger I just developed it and also being through a biochem degree you learn critical thinking and you are very science and logic minded usually and so when it comes to some of the stuff associated with spiritual awakening and mindfulness and all of that I had a very very high skeptic alarm bell well maybe word it like that I'm not sure really how to word it it opened me up to things that I would have laughed at probably and I wouldn't have had the experience that I did last year with the meditation retreat I can't believe I'm saying last year already it was only a couple months ago really so it doesn't really feel like it was last year and honestly, like, since that meditation retreat, the meditation retreat for me itself was very peaceful. It was actually pretty neutral and pretty, like, once I really relaxed into it, like, once I felt, okay, I'm safe here, I'm not gonna be having to worry about anything. And once I was, you know, actually grounded in place, it opened up an amazing amount of peace. But what kind of still surprises me is post-retreat and post retreat is beyond words. I was very, very skeptical after, you know, leaving the retreat and going, that was a wonderful, peaceful vacation, but I don't really feel any different. Fast forward a couple of days and that all changed. And as the weeks have gone on, I think it's becoming pretty obvious that there was some type of a shift. Anyways, I'm gonna get off of this topic. It's the only thing I really ever wanna talk about. So I wanna get back to this of will this ever get any better? I guess I just am hoping that I am a symbol and a sign of hope that it is possible to have things get better and it's possible to resume somewhat of a normal life. You know, I do struggle quite a bit sometimes like I don't show it actually but there are times when it's really 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 difficult and there are times when I just want to you know 
have a two-day nap basically because I'm so tired but I'm so thankful to be able to do everything that I do and some of this is a bit of conditioning some of this is a bit of survival that I learned during the last few months of my biochem degree so there are some days where I am in survival mode again and I can feel when that happens but now instead of going oh no I think I'm getting sick again no it's a sign that okay this is This is the point where my body's telling me it's time to take a step back. You need a break. It's okay. You can rest. Everything's going to be okay. I just feel like this is a very, very difficult question to answer. And it's not something that is possible to answer. When I was trying to find a way to respond to this message, it's not an easy thing to respond to at all, actually. It's not something that, I don't know, I just feel like I can't do the the question justice, basically. I can talk a little bit from my experience, I can talk about maybe what I think might be the case, but I can only talk from experience, and my experiences, yeah, it did get better, you know? The thing is, I wonder, and I want you guys to ask this to yourself. I want you guys to ask the question, describe what would be ideal at this point in time. Take a pen and paper and write it down. And then a few months from now, evaluate that and see where you're at. See if you've improved at all. Because when it comes to, like, especially IIH, and I'm going to say even migraines, but especially IIH, if you're looking at improvement, it's not going to be in days or weeks. This is going to be something that you're going to have to look at over months and even possibly years. So I was diagnosed with IIH in September of 2018, and it's only spring of last year that I would say that I can even fully confidently say that I'm in remission because it's been a year, I think, year this past spring that I was taken fully off medication. Now, things started to improve pretty much right from the time that the diamox started working or the cetazolamide started working. I think they up increased it once just because they weren't seeing the improvement that they wanted to. And then once I got ahead with the weight loss, that's when they started noticing, oh, good the optic nerves look good let's try taking you off of medication and then i just always had continued to have a success after getting off of the medication slowly so but like i said this all took several months even years so to expect and actually that was one thing that i'm really really happy my ophthalmologist was really open and honest with me about this i was told at the start that it would be a marathon and not a sprint to expect that things would take a while to get better and see improvement i'm just wondering at how many people have been told that open and honestly from their doctors or specialists or whatever leave down in the comments down below if you've ever had that conversation with your doctor i don't know if it was the vibes that i was giving out that they were open with me like that my neurologist never really was open with me like that but the ophthalmologist was very open and said yeah this is gonna be something that you're dealing with for a little while the migraines are just to the point now (laughs) where you know i can kind of have a little bit of a warning as to when they might be a little bit better or worse and actually now it'll be to the point where you know I might be having an off day and I might be like oh what's going on like I'm just I'm not functioning well and then somebody else will mention something because they have migraines too not chronic migraine but they have migraine and they'll be like oh well I think I had this thing happen yesterday and I'm just like huh Maybe that's what was going on. That would make sense. I had all the symptoms. See, the thing is, is that when some of this is only in hindsight, can you tell? And now that I'm doing as well as I am, there are very few times where I'm just like, ooh, I feel like I have a migraine. Like, it be, because it doesn't feel like what it used to. I guess I should say it's not very obvious anymore when I'm experiencing the exact symptoms of a migraine because the pain hardly ever comes. And especially if I'm in a certain period in the cycle of my Amavig, 
it's there's almost no pain i mean i can have a bunch of visual symptoms if i'm having visual symptoms i almost can guarantee it's probably some type of migraine but or a bad day even but the thing is is like it could be a bad sleep like you know i'm just more likely dependent on something else rather than the migraines which is really interesting and something i hadn't really thought about until like just this moment so in case you're wondering as to does it get any better to the point where you're not ob- automatically blaming your chronic illness for something i feel like i'm at that point now i just think it's important to say that i feel like it's normal like not only is a part of the grieving process that comes with chronic illness that no one ever talks about but it comes with the fact that things just are really really hard you want to be a functioning member of society like none of us wants to be able to not be able to work or not be able to go and do things with our family and friends or have to cancel on you because of our symptoms flaring or not be able to spend time with our kids or our spouses because of everything that's going on. I don't think I know of anyone who wants to be in an incredible amount of pain all the time with no breaks or experiencing dizziness or vertigo or experiencing fatigue or all of the other symptoms that can come with migraines and IIH or other chronic illness or chronic pain and not want to have you know a normal life now there's a chance that things could be worse depending on where you are at and the medications that you try because you know side effects it's going to be very individual on how this question is answered and it might be just one of those questions that just you can't answer it until looking back in hindsight so with that being said i'm going to end it there for today so i'm going to do my normal ramblings here so if you're not wanting to listen you can to stop the recording now but if you're wanting to follow me on social media you can do so on instagram at awareness with ashley tiktok is the same to watch the short video content if you're wanting some more fun and all of that you can find me at ashley enjoys music i pretty much only put out videos on that account when i feel like it so there's no set schedule and there will never be a set schedule because i put out videos when i feel like i want to put out videos there on facebook at Ashley Stewart, which is the same as my channel on YouTube. And Twitter, you can find me at Ashley Stewart94. I hope you guys have enjoyed this particular topic and particular video. If you have any questions or there's something that you want me to cover, you can leave them in the comments. Please, if you're watching this on the podcast, subscribe, leave a review. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications to all so you never miss any of the content. Also, if you're on Facebook, please don't forget to follow me and make sure that you have notifications on so that you know when we go live on facebook or youtube because i'm doing a little bit of both and if you'd like to support my work you can do so on locals.com and it's ashleystewart.locals.com the link is in the description of the video as well as the podcast notes that's it for this one guys and i will see you all in the next one bye for now if you enjoyed this podcast please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your favorite podcasting app it really helps get the show out there Hope to see you again next week for our next episode. Bye, everyone.